Efforts to find a resolution to the Sudanese crisis face mounting challenges as the situation grows increasingly complex. Khartoum vibrated with explosions on Friday, accompanied by artillery shelling targeting the Omdurman region as the truce fell apart. The Sudanese army responded by deploying military reinforcement to the capital after suspending its participation in negotiations, accusing the rapid support forces of violating the Jeddah agreement mediated by Saudi Arabia. We agreed to more than one arms test despite the rebels' non-compliance with its requirements and their non-implementation of any of the points that were signed in the Jeddah Agreement, which prompt us to take a decision to suspend negotiations, and our delegation remained in Jeddah in the hope that mediation would take a fair and more effective approach that would ensure adherence to what was agreed upon. Images have come to dominate the Sudanese landscape since the outbreak of violence in April. The Rapid Support Forces have been sharing videos on their platforms, declaring their readiness to repel any forthcoming attacks. Amidst this dire situation, the Sudanese people continue to suffer, according to the latest figures from the medical syndicate. The civilian death toll has surpassed 860, with over 3,600 wounded. More than 1.2 million people have been internally displaced, while over half a million sought refuge abroad, according to the United Nations statistics. There are no indications that the military confrontations will abate soon, raising concerns about the escalation into full-blown civil war. The fragility of the truce, the prevalence of violence in Sudan, and the party's commitment to military action in pursuit of what they perceive as a victory all contribute to the growing uncertainty and instability in the region.